Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to install the 8 megapixel light burn camera on my Thunder Nova 24 laser. This particular camera is a 4K N 75 degree camera. Let's check it out and see what we can do. The first thing that I had to determine is where I was going to mount the camera. It looked like to me that we have two different options here. We could mount the camera here, or we could mount the camera a little bit higher. What I did to establish which one was better is I temporarily affixed the camera with just some uh, duct tape here and uh, fired up the camera, looked at the bed, did the same thing in this location and there was no doubt that this higher location, number one, it was a little bit more centered to the bed uh, and gave you a much evener field of view. So that's what I decided to do is go with uh, the highest mounting area possible. Okay, the camera comes, uh, this is a 5 megapixel uh, camera mount that uh, you can order from Lightburn as well. Works real good. It comes pre-installed. You've just got to put in this little white connector into the side of the camera. And then there's two ad adhesive-backed uh, uh, stickies on the back. Um, and once you put it there, it seems to be really solid. Um, centered it, of course, but uh, nice clean installation. Okay, so once I had the camera location decided, I, I really need to consider on how I was going to wire this because that little white connector that goes into the camera right there is fixed and you cannot uh, take it apart. So I needed to worry about getting that little white connector through any grommets that I might either be installing or up through the machine. So what I did is I drilled a 5 16 hole right there where that grommet is. That's like a, 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 a half inch grommet with a 3 16 uh, interior opening. And I opened that grommet, pushed the white connector through it, and then installed that uh, grommet in the case. I was shocked on how heavy this case is when I drilled a hole. It was about twice as thick as I thought it would be. Then I just ran the cable down along, along the bottom of that channel and tucked it in with a uh, ties and then it comes up through that grommet right there it's the black cable on the left hand side comes up and is tied down with a couple of cable connectors there comes up I've got enough slack in that cable right there so when I open or close the lid I don't have any tension and I went behind the uh, glass support struts tied things down and just made sure there was enough slack going to the camera. That worked out really well. Once I had the cabling routed and installed in the camera, plugged it into the laptop, everything fired up right away. There's a lot of good videos out there on uh, calibrating your camera from Lightburn. I, would, uh, I use the one that Lightburn produced and it's great. It worked, it stepped me right through it worked great, did the calibration. I would highly recommend that when you print out your calibration pattern, like they say in the video, to put it on a piece of cardboard or something to make sure it's as flat as it could be. When I got done calibrating my camera, I was amazed on how accurate it was. And coming up next, we're gonna do a little project on why would you need a camera for a laser? Um, there's a lot of different applications and I'm gonna just show you uh, a couple of them. So stick around. Okay, so here's going to be our project. The beauty of having a camera on a laser like this is, let's say you wanted to engrave something on the handle of this spoon, but if I didn't have the camera, I would either have to take a picture of this and trace it, create a digital file, and then go ahead and, and put in what I wanted to engrave on this handle. With a camera, I cut all that out. All I have to do is basically lay this spoon in the bed of my laser, and that camera will look down on it and I'll be able to superimpose my design right on the handle of this spoon and be able to laser it in very little time. So um, unusually shaped uh, items, items that you don't have a pattern for, um, you can go ahead and do. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put Hope's Home Cooking with a heart on the uh, stem of this wooden spoon and uh, 
See how I do it. It's pretty quick, pretty cool. Okay, so what I've done is I've uh, turned on the camera control and I've updated the overlay here. And so basically what that uh, does is that gives me a snapshot. Uh, real time is over here on your right hand side. And then on the left here, that's just a, a screen capture. Uh, but this is calibrated. And so all I'm going to do now is I've got Hope's Home cooking over here. I'm going to select. I'm going to bring over here and we'll, we'll go ahead and put on the handle of that spoon. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and that's as easy as it is. All I need to do now is um, send the file over to the laser and uh, shut the lid and we can go ahead and burn this. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the lid. We're going to send the file over and then we'll get the camera on it and we'll burn it. Okay, we've got the file loaded. Let's go ahead and frame it, make sure we're on target. I think that's going to work out just fine. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Check it out here, fresh off the machine. And that's how easy it is with a camera on your laser. You can imagine how many possibilities it opens up for you when you do something like this. Okay, the next little project I wanted to show you, this is the backside of a stainless steel Incra ruler. Um, I'm always looking for the decimal equivalents of, of uh, fractions. And so what I thought I'd do is, you can see on the left hand side, I've already got some burnt on there. I thought, you know, let's go ahead and continue that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the decimal uh, conversions on the right hand side and so I just put this back on the bed of the laser it's uh, sprayed with Enduramark and we're going to show you how easy it is to go ahead and just line up and uh, put whatever you wanted to on the back of that ruler you've got an array in the middle that you've got to kind of uh, stay away from if you wanted to do something like this and you wanted to actually get really crazy uh, you certainly could do it maybe we'll even put something right in the middle of that array. Something that would be pretty tough to do if you didn't have a digital file of this ruler. So I think what we'll do is we'll put uh, we'll put something in this array so you can see how accurate it is. Check it out. Okay so what I've done is I've just got some um, fractions and decimal equivalents uh, pre-done. Here's the bed of my laser. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put show. You can see that this is just a screen capture of what's there. If I stick my hand under there, you can see real time on the right. If I update overlay, you can see it's captured my hand. If I take it away. And so now what all I need to do here is I'm going to go ahead and um, select my decibels, decimals, come over here and blow it up so I can see what I'm doing. And if this is too bright, we can also take the auto exposure off. We can kind of get it down, update the overlay a little bit, brightness down. There we go. 
now we can see things. You can see these holes on the top we've got to kind of stay away from. So we're going to bring that right over here. Okay. Then I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's uh, put the letter, let's come over here and go right here and put the initials RK right there. And we're going to put them right in the middle of, and let's go ahead and take a look at our preview. Okay, that's what's going to be printed out. All right, now all I've got to do is send this file over and it'll burn um, these and that pretty much right in the middle there. If we wanted to get it exact, let's say that for whatever reason, we wanted to come over here and we wanted to draw our rectangle to make sure that we're right in the middle of that. We can go ahead and select the, my initials that and center it and now we know that it's pretty much right in the middle it needs to go maybe a little bit to the right good enough going to get rid of this box okay we're going to send this file over and see what it does Okay, we've got the file loaded. We're going to go ahead and frame it just to make sure that it's going to work. Come over here. It's going to show it all. Let's see how it goes. Just tracing the numbers, uh, making them a little bit cleaner. All done. All right, let's check it out. Come in here and move this magnet. And then you can see that RK is pretty close. I actually moved it over just a little bit. That was my fault. Anyway, you get the idea. Pretty handy to have a camera on your laser. As you can see, having a camera on your laser can do some pretty cool things, make short work out of stuff like this. I'll go ahead and put the link to the Lightburns camera installation video in the description of this video. And as always, like and subscribe. Have a great day.